A polarizing vote in New York's lower Manhattan splitting many touched by the 9-11 attacks. Now officials have given the green light to build a mosque near ground zero. But does this help or hurt what is still very much an ongoing healing process? Here's Lucy Yang from affiliate WABC. It was a raucous and impassioned meeting in Lower Manhattan as Community Board 1 considered whether or not to support a mosque near the former World Trade Center. There are 200 mosques in New York, and yet another one is not a big deal. The Calm down. Calming down easier said than done as speaker after speaker railed against the Islamic Center. This is an insult. This is demeaning. This is humiliating that you would build a shrine to the very ideology that inspired the attacks of 9-11. This house of evil will be the birthplace of the next terrorist event. We feel 9-11 very, very much. We belong in this area. The old Burlington Coat Factory at 45 Park Place has already been purchased and plans are underway to build the Cordoba House, a 15-floor Islamic museum, cultural center, and prayer space right in the shadow of Ground Zero. In the end, the board voted overwhelmingly in support of the new mosque, which means the only way for opponents to stop the plan now is to have the building landmarked. What is your group hope to accomplish today, and why are you against the building of Cordova House, this Muslim and cultural c community center? Well, Ground Zero is a war memorial. It's a burial ground. And this mosque is offensive. It's humiliating. It's demeaning to the 3,000 innocent victims that lost their lives. Without Islam, this attack would never have happened. And we are rallying at Ground Zero at the corner of Liberty and Church to show the public outcry. And we're asking that they be sensitive and tolerant and responsive to this overwhelming uh, dissent to this mosque. The latest polls show that America is against this mosque. To build a shrine to the ideology that inspired these jihadists attack Ms. is Keller? insulting. It is, yeah. I, w I, w I want to read yeah. the, the response here from the, the imam of the, of, the, of the mosque and the cultural center because they've put this out here and they want people like you and others who are uh, criticizing them to understand what is going to take place in this facility. And they say that the Cordoba House seeks to create a community center where all people, Muslim, Jews, Christians, and those of every faith can gather in the spirit of honor, respect, and peaceful coexistence. And they go on to say that we cannot think of a better expression to promote the peaceful values of our faith than the Cordoba House, where American Muslims stand together with fellow citizens to condemn extremism and terror. It is a project to honor those who were harmed on September 11th. Uh, why do you object when they say, you know, that's not correct what you're saying? This center is not about uh, promoting some sort of hateful ideology. It's quite the opposite. First of all, that, that statement is deception because it is a mosque and well, only Muslims can pray. Only Muslims can pray in a mosque. The only time non-Muslims are allowed in a mosque is if, if perhaps they would be uh, able to convert. There is no uh, plurality. There is no tolerance here. Well, well that's and you, not true because the imam says that they would actually welcome people of various faiths to go and check this out. And you can as a non-Muslim. I'm a non-Muslim. I've been to a mosque before if you're invited to go as a guest as long as you're respectful. Yes, I you mean, are. You're invite, right, you're invited to go to, for proselytizing, but it is not, there is no plurality in the mosque. And my question is, why there? How could it possibly be seen as outreach to build a mosque at the war memorial that is ground zero? How? How could that be perceived? It is a kick in the head. I, I don't understand how it can be turned into this idea of outreach when it is the opposite. It is a, it is a triumph. It's triumphal. We know that an Islamic pattern is to build giant mosques on the cherished sites of conquered lands. We know this. This is Islamic history. Ms. And if Geller, it's causing like such a rift... You, I, I 
I'd like to ask you, because there are obviously Muslim scholars and Muslims who, who disagree with you, but also President Bush made this point time and time again when he uh, reached out and, and said, look, we've got to go after the, uh, those who attacked Americans on 9-11, Al-Qaeda, uh, certainly not uh, moderate Muslims and not the faith of Islam, that there is a distinction, that there's a difference, and if people don't understand it, it's, it's out of uh, uh, ignorance or misunderstanding. How do you counter that point? Even uh, President Bush said that what you're saying is not true. I, I counter that point by saying, read the Quran, read the Hadith, read the Surah. Well, they there would counter that as well I mean, and, and say that Islam, but, but there's but nothing wait, let, in let Islam, me, let me it's a perversion of Islam, to, it's, a, it's a faith it's, uh, it, it, of peace. Yes, I understand, but, you know, the Prime Minister of Turkey said there is no extreme Islam, there is no moderate Islam, Islam is Islam. There have been 15,000 Islamic attacks since 9-11, and it is inspired by the threat doctrine. We have to deal with it. Clearly, a better idea would to be build a center uh, dedicated to expunging the Quran of the violent texts that inspire jihad. Every jihadist attack has the imprimatur uh, of a Muslim cleric. I mean, this is a fact. We can't rewrite reality we have to see we have to deal with what's in front of us or how are you going to how are you going to uh, how are you going to change things Ms. Geller, how, how are you going to work you, towards peace counter, and tolerance how do you counter the reality that there are thousands of mosques across the united states and they are not points or symbols of jihad or hate we know from uh, re research done by SANE that, uh, that four out of five mosques preach a hate and preach incitement to violence. We know this. As I said, it's part of the Quranic text. I want to ask you, she says she's read the Quran, uh, and uh -huh. I guess she's pointing to a, 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 some passage in the Quran where uh, she believes that this is a, a faith that promotes uh, violence. Uh, and it, it's... Is there a portion, is there a passage in the Quran that uh, promotes what we saw Al-Qaeda do on 9-11? Well, first, let me thank you for having me on and providing my what I call typical Muslim perspective. Um, number one, a few points I want to make real quick. Unfortunately, there's a lot of erroneous translations that are out there. What we have to do is ask ourselves, what are they hoping to accomplish with this protest today against the mosque? If they're asking the government to stop it, well, that would be wholly unconstitutional. It's one of the first things I learned in law school because it would be a violation of equal protection, number one, and number two, of the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment, something I learned in kindergarten as well. In America, we have freedom of religion. Point number two, this is a fringe group. A lot of family members of the victims of 9-11, as well as public officials and regular Americans who understand American ideals, support this initiative because they understand two crucial points. Fringe groups like Pamela's, what they're doing is, number one, spreading the erroneous misinterpretation that the terrorists like Al-Qaeda want to spread about Islam. And number two, they're simultaneously feeding the propaganda that Al-Qaeda uses to recruit, which is that America is anti-Muslim. Now, Ms. Geller and her group may be anti-Muslim, but the rest of America, for the most part, is not. As well, far as what Ms. it says... Why is Ms. Geller not understanding here? Because she, she clearly has a point of view here that she feels threatened and she feels that this is going to be dangerous to have this mosque in that, in that area. What, what do you want to say to her? Well, uh, let's examine why she's threatened. Number one, she was talking about what the Quran teaches. There's 1.5 billion Muslims in the world. Now, there is admittedly probably tens of thousands of Al-Qaeda members or members of other terrorist organizations. They have nothing to do with the teachings of Islam. She keeps equating Al-Qaeda and their attack against this country with what Islam teaches. I'll take her to my family in Egypt. They'll fill her, they'll fill her uh, with food and they'll uh, take her shopping and they'll show her that the vast majority of Muslims around the world and not just in this country follow the teachings of the Quran which state, for example, in chapter 5, verse 32, killing one innocent person is like killing all people and saving one innocent life is like saving all people. Or another verse that says, let there be no compulsion in religion. Another verse that says, let there be no tyranny. This is what Islam really teaches. When you look at the accurate majority translations that are out there, there are thousands of mosques already in this country. These are the teachings of Jesus and Abraham and Muhammad that they teach in Sunday schools. It's what I learned in Sunday school growing up. And so this, uh, this mosque that they're going to be building two blocks away from the World Trade Center, let's remember, number one, a lot of Muslims died at the World Trade Center. Number two, this is going to be interfaith and open to 
to a lot of non-Muslims to use the pool, use the exhibit facilities, to engage in the dialogue just like a YMCA would. Mr. And yes, Collins. Muslims are going to go pray there because there's over a thousand Muslim Americans who work downtown that need a place to sure. pray. Sure. Let me let me ask you this. She makes the point. She says that this would be a very important symbol uh, to those who would want to do harm because it's near ground zero. Do you think that she has any kind of is, is that point valid at all? Not at all. The more she talks, the more it's clear that she does not know what she's talking about. This mosque is a symbol of the 1.5 billion Muslims who respect peace. I mean, remember that people go around in the Muslim world saying, peace be unto you, as hello and goodbye, let alone the millions of Muslim Americans, including myself, including my brother-in-law, who's an officer in the Air Force stationed in Iraq right now, teachers, doctors. These are peace-loving American people. Their relatives overseas are peace-loving American Muslims. This mosque provides a place to pray, just like several other mosques in New York City does. For her to say that it's offensive is what's offensive to us, because there's nothing offensive about our religion. Mosques are no different from synagogues and churches. And nowhere in this country would someone go out there and, and fight against the creation of a church in downtown Manhattan.